Morning, everyone. And now we go on to the practical things, even though we stay in an attitude of worship. We have birthdays, which um, for us as a church, it's important, and for us as people, it's important. And we love to celebrate those birthdays. We have today Chantal Staines and um, Vanessa Smith. Congratulations, Vanessa. I said to Raphael this morning, um, I hope you're going to spoil Vanessa. And he says, I spoil her every day, so I'm at a loss to know what to do today. How awesome is that? Happy birthday, Vanessa. And Martina Duplessis, Uncle Fred, uh, House, Bucky House, <laughs> and Ryan Gordon, Donna Gabler, Donovan Roy, and Charmaine Huster. May you all have a wonderful week. May you feel special. Your day of birth is a special day. It's not a random day. God had ordained that day for you. And then, men, there's a breakfast for you guys, Saturday. Um, <laughs> Marlon sounds excited. <laughs> okay, all you guys. A wonderful Saturday, the 12th of August, at 9 o'clock at the church, and it's 60 rand per person, which I don't think is a lot because I know the guys at big breakfasts. Please register online. The registration link will be uh, emailed on Monday. And then the hospital outreach at Carl Bremer. It's um, Saturdays. There are three Saturdays. Oh, the one is finished already. Then the 12th of August, it's 3 o'clock. And then the 26th of August at 3 o'clock. And if you've never been and you feel you would like to pray for people that are not well, that's the perfect place to be, and I believe the ministry is very rewarding and people are really being touched and healed. Then Love After Marriage. Um, it's a seminar. It's presented by Gary and Hilary Pulse from Nothing Hidden Ministries. Um, and it's 50 rand a couple, including a set... 500. <laughs> I, I would not um, pay in the rest. <laughs> so it's 500 rand a couple, including a set of <laughs> network books. And um, the dates, there are various dates, so I'm not going to read them. I'm sure as you register, you will receive the dates I think it's, it's a good thing. Um, I don't think a person can learn too much in any avenue that you're in. I don't speak uh, with um, expertise on the subject, but I'm sure all of you know that you can learn new things in marriage. Our regular meetings, youth every Friday at uh, 7 o'clock at the church. Ladies meeting every Wednesday. We won't be meeting this Wednesday because it is a Women's Day, public holiday. But the next Wednesday, we are celebrating that we are amazing women. Healing streams by appointment only. Please contact the church office to make an appointment. Moms connect the last Saturday of the month from 14.30 to 16.30 and also, please contact the church um, to make um, an appointment. Counseling and marriage, there's a lot to do with marriages. So maybe the Lord is, is encouraging you to have a godly marriage and to um, allow yourself to receive counseling, because I don't think we can learn too much about that. So there's counseling, marriage counseling. Speak to Jose and Cheryl and contact the church office. They're still so in love after all these years, so I'm sure they've got a lot to share with you, Jose. Um, and Shine, the Shine team has kindly requested, and I, and I think we can all um, adhere to this, 
It requests that people do not enter the minor hall for coffee until they have finished and have opened the doors because they're still busy with the children right up until they open the doors. So, Raphael, God bless you. Okay. Father God, we thank you for these gifts that we receive from your hand that we can give back to you generously and with glad hearts. Father, I pray those that have not been able to give due to circumstances, Lord, that you would bless them. Lord, that you would bring a harvest for them. Lord, that you may bless them with abundant bounty. And Father, I pray that we as a church would be um, looking at the finances and honoring you in everything that we do and that we would be good stewards. And Father, I pray that as we bring these financial gifts, we will bring our spiritual gifts to your house. Lord, and I pray that you would bless each one of us in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Good morning, everybody. <laughs> Thanks. Um, how are you doing this morning? Are you good? I'm well, thank you, Didi. I'm good. I, I just, as we were worshiping, there's such a presence of um, the holiness of God that, um, Veronica, I don't know, it's hard to move on, eh, when you're right there. And so I just want to ask Carter, where are you? Are you there? Come here, come. Can you? Um, wherever the Lord leads you. <laughs> but maybe close your eyes just for another few minutes or a moment. Um, nothing like the presence of God. Father, we don't want to lose our awe and wonder of you. Because God, there is no one like you. We were created for you. For your glory. In His presence, there is fullness of joy, there's fullness of peace, there's fullness of everything that you and I need this morning. And you have a free pass through Jesus to enter that holy place. So we thank you, Lord, we thank you that we come to drink from the well 
that never runs dry. Whatever it is that you just need to let go of this morning, I, I just, I really sense the Lord is here and He's here in a, you know, the Shekinah glory of God, the weight of, of His holiness, of His presence. And when, you, when you're in that, that realm of His presence, the impossible is possible. It doesn't matter what you carry this morning. It doesn't matter how you came in this morning. The God of the impossible is here. And He can do the impossible. There's no, there's no burden too heavy. There's nothing that is too heavy for Him that He cannot move. is coming upon many of you. I felt this morning that that's what you needed. <laughs> but also to see um, a sense of lightness. Do you feel that? Carter, thank you. <laughs> I heard it. <laughs> I heard it. <laughs> you know, um, there's, there's very little that one can say when the Lord has already spoken. And um, I, I believe the Lord speaks all the time. We've just got to tune into His frequency. Um, and some of you have already tuned in. I do have a word in my heart. I'm going to speak it, but don't tune out of what He's saying. Sometimes God will give a word that will be for you. Sometimes it will give a word that will act for somebody else. But in that moment, while the word's going out, you can tune, stay tuned to what he's saying to you. And that's okay. Because God is so multidimensional. He speaks to every single person in a different way and meets you exactly where you need to be met. And so the word I have this morning is, I think it's a reminder word, but I also believe in the last couple of weeks, we've heard such amazing testimonies of people coming to know Jesus. And I love that. You know, we had, a, uh, was it last week? I'm losing track. Because last week we heard all these testimonies. It was last week, eh? Or was it two weeks ago? Man, a lot has happened. <laughs> and um, God has been moving. God has been working in this church, in the lives of people. And I'm so excited because... Uh, when God moves, it's, it's not much that we need to do. <laughs> we just got to be in the flow. We got to be in the stream. Um, and so I've got, a, I've got a word title this morning, Taking Off the Grave Clothes. And uh, I don't know, like, I, I had a sense that some of you already started taking it off <laughs> this morning, unwrapping those grave clothes. Um, but I also just I wanted to say, last week, Sunday night, we had our last um, Bible school evening, and um, some things happened. <laughs> so I want to ask, Bjorn, don't you want to come and just share a little bit? I get my money, come for your office spot, sir. So I just want to, before Bjorn speaks, I want to just preface this. Um, 
We've, we've been talking about the kingdom of God and we've been talking about just releasing how, how to release the kingdom. And so we did a little bit of exercise. I didn't own him today and I didn't own him last week either. <laughs> um, we called a couple of people up and we had the class to speak. What is the Lord saying? But I know um, what happened last week. Do you want to share? Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. The year, the year is busy. Last week, um, a couple of the, the peeps that was in the class started prophesying. Um, they had me up in front, and we started. I started getting direct word from God about my family, right? And um, just to give some context on, on my family, um, specifically my sister, she's been on the streets uh, for the past uh, five, four, five months. And a lot of things were said Sunday, I'm not going to go into it, but um, I got the word that my sister will do great things for the Lord, right? And she came home Tuesday, Tuesday evening, and we had very long <laughs> conversation with her, my wife and I. And from that, she wanted to be baptized immediately. And I was like, Bach, Latus yesterday, Pat, Samuel, Loop, you know, let us help you. And um, she agreed to go to rehab. Um, she's currently at uh, Colbrema Hospital. Um, we're just waiting to hear now if they're going to keep her. So, I mean, God's been amazing. You know, so, thank you so much. Thank you. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna pray and to seal this. So what happened was Sunday night um, we were activating the gifts of the spirit, and one of the things that so we kind of took it, you know, like it's good to practice the presence of God. We took it one step, one step, one step, and then I challenged the team of the group, the, the class, right, and I said, "Was I knew." I know this man. <laughs> so I called him up and I said, why don't you ask the Lord for a word for one of his family members? We didn't say who. Um, and the words came. Tuesday, the word that was spoken manifested. Do you see the power of the kingdom breaking through? And so this is what we've been talking about. And so I just want us to pray, seal this in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you for being in his family. Lord, we thank you for your word that has gone out. And we thank you that your word never returns void. Because, Lord, it will always go and complete that which it has been destined for. And, Father, we just thank you for his sister right now. Where, Lord, where she is at, at Carl Bremner, we pray that you would speak into her heart. That, Father, you'd minister to her right now. Holy Spirit, that you'd, that you'd seal her life for your purposes, Lord. For your kingdom, Father. Thank you for strengthening this man and his wife. And we just bless them in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So, um, isn't God good? Okay. This, so there's so much happening. And um, I, I have to share this with you. Because when the Lord moves, we've got to stay on the pace of Jesus. You know, that's why he said, my yoke, you take on his yoke. In other words, you pace with him. You don't want to fall behind, and you don't want to run ahead. <laughs> you know? um, and so one of the things that we felt after Sunday, um, I believe the Lord is busy activating people for the kingdom in all of life, not just in the church. In fact, this is our training ground. This is really the, the boot camp, eh, hey, Mike? And so we, we want to start another, it's going to be a shorter one, but it's going to be a, a module that actually propels you straight in to your gifting, not just in the church, okay, and I'm going to emphasize that, but your gifting that God wants to um, use you and ignite in you outside of the church. And so we, we're kicking off effective Christian living. Ooh, it sounds so, it's not a Joyce Meyer course, okay? <laughs> sounds like one, <laughs> okay? But it's for everybody. It's for everyone. And this one is totally free. In fact, just come. <laughs> like, um, it's going to kick off in a couple of weeks' time. So watch. We're going to send out the information. It's going to be a how-to series. Practical. Things like, how do you share your testimony in the workplace? 
How do you pray for the sick when they come to you? How do you um, share a little short um, word, you know, and make some help us with that? Like, how do you prepare a 10, 5, 10 minute word to share if somebody was to invite you to speak at a 21st? Or wedding, you know, you get those invitations, right? Like how, how do you bring the kingdom into all of life? And so we're going to kick that off and it's going to run for maybe so four, we're going to see how it goes, four to six weeks. And then we're going to be activating all of that. And so church get ready because I feel like the train is already taken off <laughs> from the station. And many of you have already started to see the move of God. And it's going to get more. It's going to increase. And it's going to be outside of the church. And so we're going to have more testimonies coming. I'm almost like at a point where I feel like the preaching is going to have to come shorter. <laughs> and the testimonies are going to have to come. Because you're going to see God move in every aspect of your life. But you've got to jump on the train. You've got you to... Gotta Come with where the Spirit of God is moving. And so that, that is what I want to do, kind of preface this morning's word, taking off the grave clothes. You know, there are clothes that we wear that are part of the old nature of who we were. I remember coming to Jesus, and I joined the worship team, and it was after, you know, I backslid far away from Jesus, um, and I was studying at university, and I came back to Christ. And I remember how the old clothes used to come, <laughs> wanting to um, almost kind of cover me the whole time, you know. Um, there, was, there was a moment I was with the worship team, and I was walking at the waterfront, and um, a whole group of my old life friends came running towards me. I tell you, I was so, man, I, I did not know what to do. I didn't know where to hide, you know. Because, you know, it's funny when you don't know who you are in Christ, your sins kind of make you feel like you're not worthy. Julian said it this morning. You know, these sins of the past, these old grave clothes tend to show up again and they want to come and cover you. And I was, I was so, like, hiding, trying to hide. And um, my worship leader was very gracious. He saw and because he, he knew me, he discipled me and he said to me, he said, those ladies there, are they part of your old life? And I said, yeah. And he said, don't be ashamed. Because the old has gone, the new has come. Do you know who you are? Do you know how to get rid of the grave clothes? And so in the Old Testament, I believe, um, you know, all the godly rituals, all these things that were foreshadows of, of Christ, the Messiah, they were seen as events, you know, like, like the Sabbath, the offerings, the resurrection, the festivals. The, all these were events the Jews had. And they were, however, foreshadows of the Messiah. But when Jesus came, He said, I am. I am the resurrection. He said, I am the Sabbath. I am the truth, the way, the life. Everything that was an event became a person, the person of Jesus. And so today, when you follow Jesus, you're following a person. Because religion will say, follow the events. Have the events, you know. Come to church on Christmas. It's an event. Come to church on Easter. It's an event. Church on Sunday is an event. <laughs> but following Jesus is not an event. It's the person. It's a relationship. And so part of taking off that old clothes is following Jesus. It's getting rid of all that stuff, you know, and saying, I'm going to follow you, Jesus. I'm going to follow you, however, wherever you lead me. And Jesus said, I only do what I see the Father does. I only say what I hear the Father. In the same way, we are to do whatever Jesus d does. Whatever he did while he was alive, whatever, well, on earth, sorry, he is still alive. <laughs> we do what Jesus does. We live according to who he is, not according to events. So, you know, I, I want to break off a couple of things. 
which I believe are old grave clothes. Um, don't allow people to box you in into rituals and, you know, into laws again. Just follow Jesus. And so I came across the scripture, and you might know this story, and I just said a couple of things out of here, and then we're going to let the Lord just come and minister to us about this. But John 11 is quite an interesting story. And I'm not going to read the whole thing. I'm going to read a couple of portions and I'm going to give you some context. But John 11, the Gospel of John, speaks about the story of Lazarus. And Lazarus was a man that had two sisters. And you might have heard of Mary and Martha. And these two sisters were quite unique, you know, because the one was so passionate about intimacy with Jesus. She just wanted to sit at Jesus' feet. I don't know what it was about Mary and the feet of Jesus, but she sat at his feet, listened to him. She poured out oil. She washed his feet with, with um, oil. She, she just wanted to be with Jesus. We know about Martha, the servant, you know, the one who worked in the, the kitchen. She must have been a great chef because she loved cooking. She probably had the gift of hospitality because she loved serving. But Lazarus is mentioned in John 11 as their brother, and the Bible says that Jesus loved Lazarus, and he loved Mary, and he loved Martha. And so the day comes when Lazarus gets ill, and Mary and Martha sends off news to Jesus. And they say, they say this with the message, they, they say, please come because your friend Lazarus is ill, and we need you to come. At that time, Jesus was, in, um, with his, was with his disciples and they just fled Judea where they tried to stone him. And so they had this, you know, and, and I, I try to picture things in movie style. Okay. My wife pictures in, in art form. I picture in movies. And I just, just imagine this, right? Jesus is fleeing with his disciples from a situation where he was about to get stoned. The Bible says they just kind of disappeared out of the crowd, and then Jesus is off with his disciples. And so they end up sitting, talking, when this message comes. And the message says, you've got to go back to Judea, because your friend Lazarus is ill. And so immediately the disciples start to panic. And this isn't the first time that they panic. I was telling the staff the other day, <laughs> you know, the story of the disciples in the boat and, the, and Jesus is sleeping and there's a storm. And everybody, you know, we, we, we hear that story and we think the, the great part of that story or the theme of that story is when Jesus gets up and he speaks to the storm and the storm goes quiet and everyone's like, wow. But you know, what actually happened in that story is that Jesus is sleeping in the boat and the disciples are panicking. And they are panicking because of the storm, but they don't realize that the Messiah, the, the, the one that was promised to come, who would save the world, is lying down and he's sleeping. And he's sleeping so beautifully that when they wake him up, he's annoyed. I don't know if you get annoyed when you're woken up. No, okay. <laughs> Lord bless you. <laughs> Jesus is having this amazing sleep, and then they wake him up because they're panicking. And, and I think we somehow missed the point there, that actually the point of that story is that when Jesus is with you, you shouldn't be panicking. If Jesus can't sleep in the storm, why are you panicking? And so when we come to John 11, we see a similar situation the disciples say to Jesus, how can we go back to Judea? We just we just fled. They were about to stone us. If we go back, they say, we will be killed. And Jesus is trying to, you know, I think Jesus had a lot of patience. He's trying to explain to them that his friend, Lazarus, is ill. And in fact, in fact at that moment, Jesus already knew Lazarus died. And he says to them, Lazarus is asleep 
and I need to go wake him up. And they still don't get it. In fact, they are so in doubt that Thomas, you know Thomas, doubting Thomas. I think a lot of times we become like Thomas in situations when things are coming up against us, when we're trusting the Lord for that job. <laughs> I know, hey, listen, it's hard, eh? When you know, Lord, I've got to trust you. When that news comes, and I've got to trust you. And then that Thomas thing comes up. And you know what Thomas says? This is in verse 16 of chapter 11. Thomas says uh, to the rest of the disciples, okay, because they realized they couldn't change his mind. They said, let us go and that we may die with him. <laughs> I don't know if you have friends like that. Like <laughs> Ach, you know what? It's no point. We can't argue with this guy. He's made his mind up. We're going to die. Everybody, we're going to die. <laughs> I mean, think about this. Jesus came and spoke and the message of the kingdom that all will be saved. And they've been sitting with him for a while and then they still have that moment of, ah, you know what? We're going to die. <laughs> Those old clothes, those old mindsets, those old ways of thinking tend to creep in every now and then. Eh? Just when you think, man, I just had this victorious moment. Amazing word spoken, or I spoke an amazing word over somebody and they said, that's the Lord. And then this thing comes, and it, I don't know, Monday comes knocking. Hey. Eh? By Tuesday, it's uh, Wednesday, it's like, uh, and before you know it, it's so easy just to get back into the graveyard mindset. Hey, you have amazing Alpha Weekends. <laughs> but this, the story goes on, and, and I, I'm, I was fascinated by this because I believe that Jesus wanted you to know this about who you really are. That you, you no longer need to walk with graveyard clothes. It goes on and Jesus eventually arrives there. Now I find this fascinating that the very fear that they had that they'd be killed, when they went back, there was no mention of anybody going after them. Sometimes the fear you have is such a, 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 a mirage that the enemy puts in front of you. It's like, man, I don't know when my next paycheck is going to come. I don't know when, when this thing is going to happen for me. I don't know. And you know, and we, we, we're not just panic. We worry about it. That sometimes we can't sleep at night. And you lie up at night wondering. And yet, when you actually go back, <laughs> there's absolutely nothing. There's nothing to ever be afraid of. Hey, the next day, man, the job arrives. Eh? <laughs> but we all go through that. So they get back and Jesus goes straight um, into the town. And I find this is so fascinating that he doesn't go straight to their home. But he sits and he waits outside of their, their little town. And Mary and Martha finds out, hey, Jesus is here. And so um, they decide to go. I think it was... First, Martha that decides to go and she runs to Jesus um, to meet with him. And I'm always wondering, you know, what is, what is Jesus thinking? Already he delayed going back to see his sick uh, friend that, to the point that his friend died. And secondly, he comes back and then he doesn't go straight to go and see the dead body or, you know, uh, comfort the the, those that are mourning, he sits and he waits. And as he's waiting, Martha decides to go and meet him there. And when she gets there, she says, Lord, if only you'd been here, he wouldn't have died. And I thought, what a contrast from disciples that were walking with him. They were spending all their time with him. And yet they would say, but Jesus, if we go back, you and us, we're going to die. 
Martha says, if only you were here, Lazarus wouldn't have died. What different kind of faith you see in one passage. What kind of faith do you have this morning? What kind of faith are you walking in? Do you know Jesus is with you? And if he's with you, why do we worry? Why do we stress? And I think it's because of the old grave clothes that he's wanting to take off. And so Jesus says to Martha, um, let me go to verse 23. Jesus says to Martha, your brother will rise again. And Martha still don't understand because Martha is thinking like a typical good Jew that the day of resurrection will come one day. And Jesus says, no, 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 no. It's not about an event. He says, I am the resurrection and the life. And the one who believes in me will live even though they die. And whoever lives by believing in me will never die. Do you believe this? And I can even just imagine Martha's trying to figure this out in the head. What do you mean the one who lives will die, but those who die will live? And, <laughs> and you know, I had to come to understand the importance of living from an eternal perspective in the kingdom of God. I prayed so hard for my dad not to die. Man, I, I, in fact, I argued with pastors, I argued with everybody, and I said, he's not going to die, he's not going to die. We sat at his deathbed, um, he had cancer, and, you know, that loss, I, I don't know, it seems so... It seems so long, but it goes so quick. I don't know how to explain it. But that last moments where you see life, this life we are living in, being um, released out of that body, like bit by bit. And I remember saying, I refuse to believe that he's going to die. And uh, I had you know, phone calls from, from my various pastors um, trying to explain to me, you know. The day I went to work, I was on my way to work. I had a little Foxy VW, green one, all patched up. And I remember I drove in, got out of my Foxy, walked into the office, and um, my boss said, your mom just found you need to go back home. And I, and I, and I still, like, I refused to believe. I drove home, came home. We all came around the body, you know, in the, in the house, in his bed. He was lying there, and I looked. And at that moment, I still refused to believe this is just a body. And I tell you, those moments, and I'm saying this today because some of you know people that might be there at the moment. They're only lost. Jesus is right there. And I tell you, the moment that I realized that my father was healed in death because it was about eternity for him. That's the moment I realized that this life is temporary. That's the moment I realized that there's so much more to the kingdom of God than just the air we breathe in this world. That there's eternity. And eternity, this is what I felt we tapped into a little bit when we worshiped this morning. The holiness of God. The eternal Father. The one who was, who is, and who is to come who has no beginning and he's got no end. And then he calls you and I into that life of eternal life that we don't have to hold on to every little thing here on this earth as though this is it. Where the world puts a full stop, God puts a comma. Hi. Hey. <laughs> stop putting full stops. 
situation. Stop putting full stops. And Jesus is talking to Martha and he's saying, come on, this is not the end. And you know what? He was speaking in, into two realms at one time because he was about to call forth the sleeping Nazareth in the natural. But he was also calling forth the internal spirit of Lazarus into eternity. And so it goes on. And Jesus hears the weeping and the crying. And I tell you, I love this part because this makes Jesus so real to me. Firstly, he had friends. We tend to forget that. Eh? He had friends. Martha, Mary, Lazarus were friends of Jesus. He can be your friend. He knows what it is to be a friend. But he walks towards the house. He hears the mourning, the crying, and all these people are weeping. And then verse 36 says, And Jesus is moved by so much compassion that Jesus weeps. The shortest verse in the Bible, Jesus wept. Why did Jesus weep? I don't know. You, 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 you know, there are things that happen to you that you cannot deny. You cannot go and say, I am too blessed to be stressed. Right? I am. You cannot try. You can go and try and walk on that cloud nine as long as you want. There are things in life that will always come and bring you to your humanity. I cried, man. My dad died. I cried. My friend died. I cried. I bawled, my, my eyes were red, you know. My wife looked at me. In fact, you know, I, didn't, I cried like loud. I didn't, I didn't, eh? <laughs> I got that news. Um, where's Chrissy? Hey, we were sitting, we, so when I was sitting on a camp, a glamping camp, we were glamping. It was, it was, again, one of the weirdest moments because I woke up with a feeling and uh, I don't know, she probably wondered what is wrong with this guy. She thought I was tired or something. But I woke up with this feeling and they, wa they went um, horse riding. And I said, I, I've never been, oh no, I, I was on a horse once with Mareika. Thank you, Mareika, for getting me onto a horse. But at that time, I've never been on a horse. So I, I said to them, you guys go and I'm going to sit home and, or in this ronda, whatever they call it, glamping thing, you know. And I took my guitar. And I was just playing. And it's one of those moments where I'm like, Lord, I don't know what's going on. You know when you're feeling like something is just stirring is heavy on you? So I normally just end up worshipping when I'm feeling like it. And I'm playing and I come to a song. Did I tell you this? Oh, okay. And the song comes to me. Um, I will meet you at the river. And I'm like, why am I singing this song? And all that I'm picturing, because my, my father, I, I always thought I would see him at the river one day. You know, the river of God. And, um, and so I thought, okay, maybe it's just me going through that emotion again, that emotion of losing my dad. But i playing this thing, and then the phone call comes. And um, I think it was two calls. The one was, he's being rushed to hospital. It's Chrissy on the phone and we just find out that Stet, you know, Stet was one of our worship leaders here, was my best friend and we just find out he's rushed to hospital and, I, and, I'm, and the news come and I'm, we're praying, you know, and I'm still the song is ringing in my head and then um, the second call comes and I tell you that second call comes, it's like cold water that is thrown ice cold water thrown over you. And firstly, I mean, you literally feel it. Firstly, it's like all hope is gone. And then you're like, Lord, what is going on? So I ran out. So he's running off to me. And I'm, I'm shouting. You know that morning. And it's a deep morning. And, um, and so he's behind me and we're hugging each other and we and then that was it, you know, we jumped in the car, 
And we told the kids they were with Granny and, and Grandpa, and we said to them, we're going back. We didn't even know where we're going. <laughs> we just jumped in the car. We're driving back to get back to Chrissy. Jesus weeps. He's in that moment. That's why he's a good friend. That's why he's a real friend. He's in that moment with you. And yet he's the God of hope. He knows all, but he feels what you're feeling. And in that moment, he identifies. And he weeps with you. I felt that morning, Chrissy, Jesus was weeping with me. And he was standing there. And, and then, that hope, that hope that you cannot explain begins to rise because then you realize there is eternity, man. There's far more than this life. And one day I'm going to see them at the river. And I'm going to. I have put my, I said, Lord, that's it. I'm first person running to that river. <laughs> one day I will see them. That hope rises up within you. So when Jesus sees the morning and he gets there and he goes straight to the tomb. And he stands at the tomb. And I'm going to read um, verse 43. He says, when he, when he had said this, Jesus called in a loud voice. He said, Lazarus, come out. Now I want to tell you, if you were standing there at the tomb with Jesus, and he's probably had some red eyes, that he's cried with you, and he stands there at the tomb, and he calls out Lazarus. I'm telling you, there would, there would be two things that you'd be feeling. Either the hope that he carries would be so strong in you because it would rub off on you, or you'd be like Thomas. Ach, shame. Ach, shame. This poor guy. Calling out for what? I tell you, the, the Lord challenges me with this. Can you see hope? The person Jesus. Can you live in hope? The person Jesus. And so he calls out Lazarus. And here's the thing. The dead man, verse 44, came out. His hands and feet were wrapped with stri strips of linen. Now I want to explain this to you. A cloth around his face. The way they would prepare the body of a dead person. Jesus himself was prepared the same way before he resurrected. They would, they would wrap from the toes, wrap the body all the way, one cloth, all the way up to the top. So, so you've got to understand that when Lazarus came out, it wasn't a very nice picture. He didn't walk out, you know. <laughs> Yo. He came out. I mean, I'm, I'm just trying to understand if this guy was crawling on the floor. I'm not going to do that. <laughs> or, like, <laughs> I mean, it, it probably looked like a ridiculous picture because the guy wasn't free. He was still tied up in all those bond, the bondages, right, <laughs> of this wrapped linen. So what makes it even worse is that they would, take, um, they would take oil and they would actually rub the oil all around this linen, this cloth. And, and this oil would actually get hard and brittle. So it's not just loose cloth. That is, it's hardened cloth. That's all wrapped up. And he comes hopping out. The man can't even breathe properly through the, because through the, his face is covered. <laughs> and so when he gets out, this is what Jesus says. He says to them, who, the people. He says, hey, take off this man's grave clothes and let him go. I tell you, the importance of the right people around you. <laughs> The importance of the people that will call out your true identity. 
We were practicing that last week. Calling it out. Those that can see beyond the grave clothes. Come on, some of you, this last couple of weeks, you just got out of the, you know, there's a song that says, I came out of this grave. You know that song? I don't know why I sang it in that high, I know. The, the Bee Gees <laughs> version. <laughs> I came out of this grave. Now, some of you are still like, oh, I came out of this grave. Come on, man. What do we do? Church, we are the community. We come alongside. I said last week, some of us are stronger than others. You come alongside and you take the, say, come on, let me unwrap you there. You see, look in the mirror. Look how beautiful you look. Hey, this is who you are. And we unwrap each other's clothes. Hey, I tell you, when you're free, you're free indeed. And then you, now, I came, I came out of that grave. And you walk in your true freedom of who you are. The last couple of weeks, months has been really that, eh? We had people come helping us unwrap a little bit, unwrap and wrap and wrap. This morning, God wants to finish the job. Second Corinthians 5 17 says, Therefore, if anyone, anyone, anybody, doesn't matter who you are, how old you are, where you come from, doesn't matter what you did, doesn't matter what who you think you are. <laughs> But if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. And then it goes on and says, the old has gone and the new is here. You are a new creation. Don't allow the grave cloths to keep strangling you. But I have to say, because I'm a pastor... <laughs> Sometimes it's not easy to take your own cloths off. And that's why we need each other. Sometimes you need the friends that can speak the life and the hope, particularly when you're going through that tough thing, right? So I don't want to take, go too far. <laughs> Because I want the Lord to, to do what He said He's going to do this morning. So we take off our old thinking. We take off our old way of living. And Ephesians says we put on the new. There's a taking off and then there's a putting on. And some of you need some people to put that new on you. How do we do that? We do that through ministry, prophetic ministry that calls out identity and calls out destiny. And we do it through prayer, laying off our hands, as we heard last week in Bible school, to remind us of who we are. And so I'm going to ask you this morning, to allow the Lord to do that for you. Do you know the very man that wrote this passage? His name is John. John and Peter found out that Jesus' body was no longer in the tomb. And so they ran to the tomb. And John and Peter walks into the tomb. John records this and he says, And he saw the grave clothes of Jesus lying. And here's the significance of that. Something about grave clothes in John. John liked that. I know what it was. But I think he had a revelation of resurrection. The grave clothes of Jesus was lying. And they were lying in the exact way that his body would be laying. Which meant that nobody, could, took, it off. nobody took it off. Because those, like I said earlier, those, that cloth could not be taken off. It would have to be cut off because it was brittle. And he sees the clothes lying there in the way the body would have lied. And immediately John knew that Jesus has resurrected. It was the sign for John. And I, I, I believe there's a link here of Lazarus coming out and Jesus stepping out. 
completely freed from all that old. And that, for, for I believe, is the picture of your salvation, of my salvation. And yet the enemy will lie to us and say, you still got some cloth there, let's put some cloth around you. That he would resurrect you out of the old into the new so that you can just walk straight into the new. But you've got to accept that. To break it off. Break off the old thinking. Break off the old ways. And step into the new creation. And so I'm going to ask a couple of things this morning. Um, I haven't prepared anybody, so bear with me. But I'm going to ask some of our leaders. And I'm going to ask some of our students that did the school, if you're feeling up to it. I'm going to ask you guys to stand here because we're going to pray for people to break off the old. We're going to release some prophetic ministry. And I'm going to ask, so I'm first going to ask our leaders, so if I can get, Angus, if you can, a couple of you guys can come. Uh, Mike, would you come as well? Um, Derek, you to come. And I know some of the, some of the students last week stepped out in faith. So I, I, I want to invite some of our students just to come. Just come and stand with them. If you want to release prophetic words over people this morning, you want to come? Yeah. And I'm going to ask Cara again, Paolo, you shouldn't hide there at the back. I'm going to ask you, Paolo, to come. <laughs> come in. Yeah. Cara, will you go on the piano again? So we did something last week, and, and we're going to activate it this morning. You see, you need people that can call out your true identity to break off that old. And so we're going we're gonna to go into some worship. And I'm going to ask you to decide if you want to come up for prayer. And you can choose any, some handsome men, beautiful women. We are other ladies. <laughs> um, you can choose who you want to go to. And, and I'm going to ask, guys, if, if we let's keep it. Short, keep it powerful. You want to say something? Can we get that mic there quickly? Sorry. Um, and then just go up and, and just say, man, I want to let go. I want to break off the old completely. These guys are going to speak things over you. And they're going to call that forth. Like Lazarus come forth. Mike. Um, just at the beginning of worship, I was looking at your baby. What's your Baby, little girl's baby? Yeah. Yana. I was just thinking, wow, that has to be just one of the most gorgeous babies. Like, makes you want to have children all over again. And I was, I was thinking, you know, and I was thinking, I was taken back and reminded of my kids. And it's such a gift when you have a child and you just see the plan, the way it's meant to work, that you bless them, you put this input, and they just grow up. And it, there's always something that's, it never always works that way you always mess up as a, as a as a child as a parent they make wrong choices the enemy puts stuff in and you know that that original plan of God never fully comes but I just felt like God saying like he's done a work of recreation that is as glorious and more glorious than the original creation and there's so much scripture that says Jesus comes to restore all things he makes all things new they these verses that say that and I just felt like the Lord saying that potential remains alive and we can tap into it and whatever was lost can be restored it's just here and and when god does it if we ask it no matter what it is through healing streams through direct anything he can take us back and he can restore anything nothing is lost and that's that act of restoration of recreation is no less glorious possibly even more so that same hope and potential and joy that you see this child receiving what it was meant to receive you can come back as an adult with that sorrow with that loss and enter into that thing again it's here i just yeah it's just here available yeah. i just want to i just want to echo what mike says when when um <coughs> 
I think this is wonderful, really. It's a picture of, of God. When nine o'clock comes, you know, and you look up, and then there are these holes everywhere in the church, and then you start singing, and as you sing, people come in, and you realize that all the holes are filled, you know? Um, and to me, that, so, so God was speaking to me about discontinuity. So it's, imagine for a second, you, you, you can think of the most beautiful person that you've seen, like a model, right? And, and they, you know, a man or a woman, and, and they look beautiful, and they smile, and half their teeth are missing. And that's funny, it's humorous, but our lives are a little bit like that. <clears throat> and God says, some of you are sitting here with a sense of discontinuity in your life, where there have been good things, and there have been things that you are upset and sad about. And God says, you know what? I know where the holes are. You can keep your mouth shut. I know where you are missing teeth, but I love you. And I want you this morning to bring that to me because, you know, if you had a really good orthodontist, they have all these miracle cures. Um, God's better than that. So God says, bring the brokenness to me because if you bring it, I can fill it, I can fix it, I can take the shame away. And, and you can live shamelessly. The great thing about, about the Lazarus story is when they took the grave clothes off, he didn't have anything on. <laughs> because they don't, they don't embalm you with a suit on. He didn't have Gucci or Prada or an Armani t-shirt. He had nothing. Because, because we are, are meant to cover ourselves with the garments of salvation that we are given, Come on. which are more glorious than anything you can cook up. So this morning, if you're feeling naked, it's a good thing because you need to be naked to receive the gracious gift of God, which is this glorious salvation that He gives us, which we can only get if we let all the other stuff go. So let it go this morning. ask you just quickly to close your eyes and allow the Holy Spirit to speak to you. It's already been speaking. I want you to know there, there is no shame. There is no judgment here. And we're going to open up this um, the front here you, for you just to come to say wherever you choose to go to wherever you go to say I, I just want to let the goal go let it go and just allow the Lord to minister into your heart so I'm going to ask Jillian to come and lead us into a song to Jose as well and, um, and then be, be bold <laughs> be bold don't worry about people it's you and Jesus. Jesus is standing, calling you out. And he's saying, come forth. And so when you feel ready, just come to the front. Someone will pray for you. And they'll minister into your heart, into your spirit.